I greet you in the name of the risen and victorious Lord, the Lord who shined the light of divine glory on top of that mountain, the story you just heard. My message today is entitled, Blinded by the Light. Do you remember the last time you were blinded temporarily by a, a bright light? Like maybe somebody waved a flashlight in your face and yet you were temporarily blinded by the bright light there? Or remember as a child, if, if somebody threw a ball up into the air and you're about ready to catch the ball on a bright sunny day, but the sun is in your face and the sun is temporarily blinding you from catching the fly ball. I had a weird experience not long ago where I saw a sun glare while I was driving the car. It was a very, very scary experience. I was driving eastbound on Route 80 toward New York City early in the morning, and the sun was directly in my line of vision. And that is scary. If that's ever happened to you, because you put your, your visor down, you're squinting, you got sunglasses on, and you still can hardly see in front of you. But sure enough, I'm in bumper to bumper traffic. The sun is in my face. We're going about 40 miles an hour. And there were periods, moments, seconds where I couldn't even see the car directly in front of me. I was afraid if that person put his brakes on, I'd slam right in because I didn't see. Or if I slowed down, the guy behind me would run right into me, blinded by the light. There are times when we are temporarily blinded by bright light. That's what I want to address today because in each of our scripture verses, there is talk about the image of bright light. Let's start with our gospel reading. The gospel reading you heard me describe to the children the day when Jesus was up on a mountain and now there's blinding light beams coming out of his body. Can you imagine for a second what that must have been like? I mean, a person who looks like a human being now all of a sudden is shining like the sun, blinding the men who were there. They had to shade their eyes, turn away. The, the, the glory of God was through Jesus at that moment, blinding Holy Spirit, grace of God kind of light. But then in our New Testament lesson, Paul offers a contrast about the light of God, a contrast. Let's take a close look. I'd like you to look at the monitor closely when I read this Bible verse from 2 Corinthians. Look at what Paul is writing here. He says, the God of this world, who is Satan, has blinded the minds of unbelievers, here's the key, to keep them from seeing the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God. What's going on here? Let me explain. Look at the first part again. The God of this world. Notice the word God is in a lowercase g. In the scriptures, Satan is often described as the God of this world with a lowercase g, or he's described as the God of the sky. Again, lowercase g. To, to indicate there is only one true God with an uppercase G, right? But Satan now is trying to blind us and not see the light at all. Now, on the mountaintop, Peter, James, and John couldn't help but notice the blinding, bright, glorious light of Jesus. But according to the Scriptures, the devil doesn't want you to see that light. The devil doesn't want you to acknowledge the light of Jesus in your life. The devil wants you to ignore the light of Jesus. The devil wants you to look beyond the light of Jesus. And according to Paul here, we are blinded sometimes and we don't see the light of Jesus. Now, there are scripture references to this as well, and I share them with you, just a few, and there are many. What about what happened on Good Friday? when people in the crowd were shouting, crucify him, kill him, execute him, crucify him. Now, if they saw the light of God in Jesus, they never would have shouted for his execution. They were blinded to the light. They didn't even see the light of Jesus and they asked 
for his death. And then there are three different resurrection appearances detailed in the Bible. And this is interesting. On Easter Sunday morning, when Mary went to the tomb, uh, one account says that Mary encountered the risen Jesus right there in the cemetery on Easter morning. And she did not recognize him as the Lord. Now, come on, Mary knew exactly what the Lord looked at look like, but she was blinded to recognizing his appearance as the risen Lord. She thought he was the gardener of the cemetery. She thought he was the caretaker. Uh, and she said, where is my Lord? And then all of a sudden her eyes were open and she saw the light of the resurrected Jesus. Another resurrection story. Two men are walking toward Emmaus and Jesus joins them on the road. Now, this is the resurrected Jesus. He had just risen from the dead, and he's walking along the road with them, and they did not recognize Jesus. They were blind to the light of his resurrection. Another story. After the resurrection, Jesus told his followers, meet me on top of a mountain. I will give you final instructions. I will give you blessings before I ascend to the heavens. According to Matthew, they all got together on top of the mountain and it says they worshipped him, but some doubted. Now, I think that's important to realize that. Matthew says some doubted. What's he saying? He's saying that some people were blind to the light of Jesus. They didn't even see the light of Jesus. Even in the resurrected Jesus, they weren't able to see the light of his power and resurrection. So Paul is saying here, it's possible that the, the devil is working on you not to see the light of Jesus in your own personal life. He doesn't want you to see the light of Jesus. Now, do you think that's true? You think that there are times when we don't see the light of Jesus? You bet your life. How about in the medical community when doctors look at medical tests and they say, how did this person recover from this illness? This is beyond belief. This is beyond statistical explanation. We can't explain this medically. And they're scratching their heads and they're looking at results and, and they're saying, we can't explain why this person made a dramatic recovery because they're blind to the miracle. That's why. They're not seeing the light of Jesus and Jesus touching that person and performing a miracle right then and there. Miracles still do happen, but so many times we don't see the miracle for what it is because we're not looking for the light, we're not acknowledging the light, we're not affirming the light. No, we're trying to explain everything scientifically. But God works in the supernatural. God's light will shine in places we would never imagined it could shine. Or how about this one? Here's another one. Talk about not acknowledging the light of Jesus. Something very nice happens in your life. And you say, oh, what a coincidence. I ran into my best friend I haven't seen in years, or I ran into an old high school classmate, or I got a phone call from an old friend. What a coincidence. I'm saying it wasn't a coincidence. I'm saying the light of Jesus was opening up a new opportunity for you. I'm saying the light of Jesus brought you together with somebody you needed to get together with at that particular moment. I'm saying that when good fortune comes your way, it's the light of Jesus opening doors, creating new opportunities, new ventures for you. And yet we go around saying, oh, what a coincidence. What are the odds of that happening? Why not say, the light of Jesus shined brightly in a place I never, ever expected before. The light of Jesus is there. You get a promotion at work and you say, I can't believe I got the promotion. The other person there was more qualified than me. How come I was chosen? How about this? Maybe the light of God opened up a brand new door. You can't explain it. But the light influenced those people to give you that opportunity. Look for the light of Jesus. So often we go around with blinders on. We're not seeing the, the light that's shining. We're not acknowledging the light. We're not even asking for the light because we don't see it. 
Paul says that's the work of the devil. When you don't even see the light of Jesus when it's right in front of you, right in front of your nose. So what is Paul saying about that? How can we deal with all this? Well, let's look at another verse. It's up on your monitor. And this is a very good verse to focus on today. Paul wrote, The eyes of your heart are enlightened, that you may know what is the hope to which God has called you, the riches of his glorious inheritance in the saints. A few verses later, Paul wrote a very similar thing when he said, open the eyes of your heart. What is he saying? He's saying in faith, deliberately look for the light of Jesus around you and within you. And you won't be disappointed. Lord, open the eyes of our hearts that we may acknowledge your true and living light wherever it may shine a light that guides us, a light that sustains us, a light that will carry us through. Now you might be sitting there thinking, well, I haven't seen the light of Jesus in quite a while. I'm going through a rough time. I'm going through a crisis. I feel like I'm in a dark tunnel. I'm not seeing the light, and I'm not seeing the light at the end of the tunnel either. But I guarantee you, the light is shining for you. A light that may be dim at first, but when you open the eyes of your heart, you see the light, you acknowledge the light, you praise God for the light when you see it clearly. Here's what I'm asking. Don't be blind to the blessings that are around you even when life is difficult. Don't be blind to the miracles, the small miracles that happen in your life and in the lives of those you love on a very frequent basis. Don't be blind to the ways that God is acknowledging you, leading you, and directing you to be blessed beyond your wildest imagination. The light of God is there for you. Faith can see it and perceive it. All I ask is that you pray for your eyes to be opened and you may see the glory of God. I'm going to remind you of something I said at the very beginning of this message. You recall when I said earlier in this message, I said when the light came out of Jesus that day on the mountain, those three men, they couldn't help but notice the light. It was like staring at the sun when they looked at Jesus. I'm telling you right now, I am telling you right now to notice the light of Jesus. Open your eyes wide. Perceive your soul. Look at the ways the Lord is leading you today. And then say, thanks be to God, because Jesus said about himself, I am the light of the world. No darkness can overcome this light. May that light shine in your heart, in your soul, in your faith, nurturing your hope in Jesus, the light of the world. Thanks be to God. Amen. And may the peace of God, which surpasses all human understanding, keep our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen.